Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing with the Sprinter van build and today we're going to take a look at making a bed frame using the Scova IKEA bed supports. If you're new here, I'm Aidy, single dad to my twins, John and Ella. We're home educating and living life our way. Years ago, I worked as an underwater cameraman in Thailand where I met their mom. We tragically lost her at the birth in Bangkok but our journey wasn't about to stop there. We're now converting our big van, a Mercedes Sprinter, getting ready for new adventures across Europe and beyond. Join us as we build, explore, and live our lives to the full. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. It's written Scorva in English, but I've got quite a few Scandi friends, so you guys let me know how you would say it be Scorva, Scorva, something like that, yeah? You tell me. Um, this video is being filmed at the same time as I'm filming the uh, bathroom video. I still haven't got the door on in the bathroom, but you'd have watched that probably last week or the week before. I don't even know at this point, but because I'm going to be starting this bed frame really early on in the build and then going back and revisiting it later, I thought I would film a bit of an intro now and uh, show you what I'm doing purely because I'm doing something quite clever and I'm very proud of myself and I want to show you. So come and have a look at this. First of all, look at this that I got. I bought it on eBay and got it printed. What do you reckon? Life uncharted. I'm not gonna use it for work though, it'll get all dirty. What normally happens with these things, for those who aren't familiar, they are extendable and you have three of them to make a double bed. I'm gonna put them the other way around to make uh, two single beds. You've got these brackets which go on the end of the bed and then this slots into them. Now, even though I managed to get hold of some of these brackets 20 quid later, I've decided after watching another YouTube video, someone else did it a bit differently. Because our bed is gonna be quite high compared to most, because it's gotta get over Ella's bed, I'm gonna build some mad construction uh, and then this is gonna fit onto the top of the wood. So I'm actually thinking, I'm just gonna do away with these, I don't even need them, and I'm just gonna clip it onto the wood. Where's my template gone? Here we go. So what I made, was this little template here, and that fits perfectly on to the end of there. So you can imagine it's just gonna sit on the wood. Don't need the metal frame at all, uh, the metal clip plate thing at all. But what I did was, because I made a template, I was able to measure my points along this piece of wood, plop that on there, spray it with a spray can, and it's all ready for cutting. I was quite proud of that. I thought it was clever. I'm gonna to have to adapt this template to fit the other end, obviously, because it's just a little bit thinner. So I'll just trim that up and I'll measure the same measurements on my other piece of wood. And then I can do the same with the spray can and I'll show you that. But very quickly, I'll show you where these are going so you get an idea of how I'm gonna do this. The plan here is, oh, cause you who will follow for a long time, you'll know Ella's bed is going to be coming above the wheel arches going across ways. John and I are going to sleep over here uh, at a higher level. So, oh, I'll move my precious new hat. What I'm going to do is bolt into here because this is the only bit of metal I've got to work with. There's nothing here but insulation. So this is going to bolt up to there like that. And then as you can see where the marks are, the bed frame can go across there. What I might do is just to lighten it a little bit is I'm going to cut sections out of it where I don't need wood and just have like little mountains where the support needs to be. I reckon that'll be strong enough for me and a teenager don't you think? To be honest give me your views in the comments because I'd really like to know what your opinion on that is. I'm not going to cut too much out but obviously I want to save as much weight as possible. So this is the clever bit, watch. I line my center point up to my center point line. And all I've got to do is go squirt, squirt, and it's done. Then I move to the next one. What are you doing? So these may look like utterly ridiculous shapes, but trust me, the weight loss on them is incredible. I will show you why they are like they are. John, hold the camera, follow me. So, this one 
is going to go here, uh, like that, and obviously hold a bed slat, whatever you call it, support there, central, and at that end. I've left a bit extra here because this is the only place where there's an up support of metal. So I can bolt this through here to the metal as well as bolting it. I'll be bolting it all the way along the bottom, which is going to take most of the weight. This piece of wood here will fix to the piece of wood that's going across to make Ella's bed. So that's going to give that support. That one will have support from the rear for, from another bit. And this one will get support from there. Because the only weakness in this structure, because the force pushing down is not going to go anywhere. The only weakness is if this thing can fold like that. So it will not be able to with what I'm going to do. Trust me. Whew. All right, sorry, I forgot to show you. I've just drilled a load of uh, holes along here for the bolts to go through. And then I discovered if I'm going to put as many riv nuts in this as I would like to put in this, I don't have enough riv nuts. So we're going to be able to probably get one side up today. I wish I could have got both up because then we could actually test it with the bed slats, which would be quite amazing. I have found my patience. I will wait. eBay will be delivering some because you can only buy them in packs of hundreds from like uh, screw fix and stuff. And I only need a handful. So they'll come in a few days. So we'll get on with some other bits in between. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look at getting this on the wall. I'm going to drill the holes for the riv nuts first. Oh, and we've also fixed a temporary batten along here. It's a real pain. I've had to bolt it into the wall, but that is allowing us to sit the uh, plywood on top of it quite comfortably and get it spaced and leveled the way we want it exactly. So there's no error. And what we'll do is we'll have to take this off after and uh, uh, treat the holes. I'm tired. I can't think and I don't know how to speak anymore. I was just thinking to myself then, as I said, we'll have to take it off. I was thinking, actually, we maybe don't because <laughs> we're going to need some there anyway. I'll stop talking now and I'll start drilling holes, shall I? Mm hmm. I don't know if I'm coming or going, to be honest. We're filming two different videos at the moment and it's very confusing. Who are you? Ah, oh, you're the lot who are interested in the bed, aren't you? What we're going to do is we're going to stick this one side up and then when we get some more riv nuts in some days, we'll stick the other side up and then we're going to be able to test out the frame. What we'll do is we'll put the um, trusses across and we get a piece of plywood and put it on top and John and I can actually test it out and see how it's going to be. But for today, uh, we're just going to get this on. John, are you alright to grab the other end of that, please, buddy? Yep. Thank you. Can you feed that wire through? Thanks, mate. That's the way. And then have you got that little bit of wood to stick in the end? Is that okay? Oh, yeah, we don't need to pull it. That's fine. That bit of wood to stick in the end? Right, we're there. So you can just hold it against the wall now. Thank you. So if everything goes to plan, <laughs> these should line up exactly. What's the bets? Oh, we've lost our uh, security light. It's getting dark now. I have to wave at the... Hang on, let's get the light. Come on, light. Thank you. And I'm going to put a little bit of um, thread lock on these. Just because. Because this is the bed that's going to hold John and I. And we don't want it to collapse. Let's try this one. Tight. What does that lock not even do? This is like a glue. Oh. But it's a special kind of glue that doesn't glue glue all the way. So what it does is it stops the nuts from wanting to fall off accidentally, like vibrating out. But if we ever want to take them off, we still can. It just takes a bit of a and they'll come off, yeah? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to take a bit out the back of the ply there in order to get the uh, oh, the bed bracket hooked over. John, is that IKEA bed bracket there, please? Yeah. Thanks. 
Right, so, there we go. John, look. That's how that'll be. That is so strong, it's not going anywhere. Right, we're going to leave you there tonight and we'll pick up with this video when we have the bits to pick up with this video. So folks, as promised, it is some days later. The uh, rib nuts I was waiting for have arrived. So we can look at putting this side on, but I need to take that side off and make some modifications. But what I might do is use it to uh, mark up and template where the holes will be on that side for the bolts. I have to be honest, the other day I was really, really excited because I've actually handed my notice in now on the house. So you have to give a month's notice obviously on a rental and I've asked for a bit of a few weeks breathing space. Ella's decided she'd like to spend Christmas in our house. So we're going to do that. So we're going to push on till just after Christmas and then hopefully we're off and away. Um, I am starting to wonder and I'm feeling a bit stressed and a bit under pressure. So I like to be honest with you guys. It's not all, hey, look at us building a van. It's, uh, it's very stressful. Um, because of the pressures I've put on myself, I'm aware of this, but time is running out. It's really running out. And I know I say time and money is always running out, but it really is running out. And it would have been sort of okay, but the weather's suddenly turned and I didn't think about that. You'll notice gloves and woolly hats. It gets, it's so cold. It's so, so cold. And uh, look what I've put up here because it was raining this morning when we went to start. This is a big fold out uh, pop-up gazebo that I bought. I bought it a month ago, preempting this sort of weather. And I was kind of hoping I would not have to use it, <laughs> but it's up now. Anyway, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at getting this up. And then we're going to be, I don't know how it's going to work out for this video, but we're going to start looking at the wood for the ceiling because we bought a load of sheet supply. And to be honest, to get this stuff cut up, used and pinned up on the ceiling is better than having it kicking around here because we're just we're out of the space. Um, another thing that's happened... Oh, show you this one. You've probably seen it behind me. The night pixies have been, and I have cut some sheets of ply, and we've stained it down. That is the 3.5 mil ply, and that looks fantastic, doesn't it? That just trims up that door. So thanks again, Steve, for sending the templates for that. I'll get them in the post and send them back to you, mate. Shit. Slight change of plan there, because obviously I put lock nuts on thinking this wasn't coming off again. They're not coming off again. And what I think's happened to these two here is I think the riv nut is now spinning with the main bolt. It's never gonna pull off the wall, but it means I can't undo them. And I do not have time to faff about cutting this, trying again. I will be able to modify these the way I want to modify them with them staying put there. Okay, I'll just fill you in a little bit on what we've been trying to do there. So obviously we've got that thing ready, we've got the holes drilled, but first of all you saw us put the bed slats across. That was so I could measure down at either side to get the height right and get it level. Obviously as we well know we can't use a spirit level inside a van because it's it just sat as level as the floor is underneath it and the back can be up and down and different heights depending on how much weight we've got in here. So levels don't work. So we got that. I thought I was going to have to put some spacers in here to help jack it up, but it didn't. It's absolutely perfect. That was a bit of luck for today. John's now getting some riv nuts in. Then this thing is going in and then we can put the crossbars on. And I'm going to see if I've got a piece of ply that's big enough to put on top. And we can actually test it out for bed height, which is quite exciting. Anyway, 
He'll get the rest of these rivet nuts in, and we'll get it bolted up and see what's what. Ta-da! Righty ho, that is in. I hope you can see in this nasty light. Uh, the camera cut out as we were fitting it, but that has got 11 bolts. M8 bolts going through into rivet nuts. It ain't going anywhere. So these bits here stop this one from being able to flex. There will, of course, be the side of Ella's bed going across here, which will fix into that and stop that being able to flex. And then we'll put some sort of support across the back and stop that being able to flex. I think it's time for lunch. But first, we are going to test it. Of course, we're going to test it. Let's have a look, shall we? Like that, yeah? And then you pull it out and it slots down into that side. Hook it, then you can pull it. Oh, okay. There you go, one more to do while I get some wood. That's it, pull it out, stick it in the other one. Is this safe to line? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's ready to take your weight. <laughs> that is designed to take me and you. That's awesome. <laughs> Good, huh? Be all right, so I should be, this should take the, have the strength for me to go like that. There we go. This is our bed height. Obviously, we're going to have a mattress as well. The reason I want to test this, I want to know what it's going to be like to have to get down off the other side. Mm -hmm. This wood's not really thick enough. <laughs> what we need is the actual wood that is going to be the bed now. So then we can do a proper test. Ah! So we don't actually have a piece of wood, uh, plywood, that's the right sort of size to test it properly, but it certainly takes both our uh, body weights, so that's good. I'm gonna try that smaller piece. Johnny, see that bit of uh, 18 mil there? Probably not long enough. No, it is long enough. So you go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to imagine I'm in bed because what we've got to test it out is on a morning we're going to have a partition there so I've got room to sort of go like that and I want to know what it's going to be like just because my legs have to go over here to avoid the kitchen and my head's going to be like that and then it's just kind of like that's not too bad so there we go there's John laying in the middle of our bed and then you'll, have, you'll be able to put your foot down onto the side of Ella's bed there. Mm -hmm. There'll be like a step. But that's not so bad, is it? No. Wow, that's a big, 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 big step forward. I would have pushed the price Ella while me, by me just laying down there. <laughs> would you like some lunch first? Yes. Oh, it's getting freezing. It's getting freezing. We've just had a lunch and a cup of tea, but it wasn't enough to warm us up. Um, John's going to sweep the van out a bit now. We are now going to look at these big sheets of ply which are going to be for the ceiling and I'm going to batch process them. I've clipped them all together nice and square. I'll make a nice neat edge there just quickly lop off an end and then I'll cut them all to the correct length. I just wanted these up so I can build cupboards up to them and use the ceiling as part of the cupboard, the, ce the roof of the cupboard kind of thing. And then we're going to look at getting the wall on next to Ella's chair. Now I've got the pain in the bum bit to take care of. If you recall, actually it's easier to show you, I'll show you. Now I always knew this was gonna come back and haunt me. If you were watching the other week when I was doing the bathroom, I had to do this. Because of the way I have done these um, battens, most people would fix the battens straight onto this metal and then it will just run and bend around to the correct contours. I had the brainiac idea of putting the battens on the side because then I'll just gain that bit of uh, roof height for well John more than me because he's such a big lanky thing plus because we're having 
um, bunk bed style kind of I wanted as much space as I could get going up so that's why the battens ended up on the side but because of that it meant here if you look the battens obviously wouldn't bend and follow the contour of the the original ceiling so I have got to cut a load of like little noggins to go here it's not a difficult job it's just a pain that I have to take care of and my fingers are numb it's so cold right now but they should all be identical so once I get one made I can kind of use it as a template and uh, bosh out one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of the little buggers. We can do that, can't we? I might, I might actually just quickly do that on my chop saw. I could put you on a time lapse or something, can't I? Let's do that. <laughs> go my little shimmies to put in there ever since the day i decided to put them battens like that i knew this day would come and <laughs> i wasn't looking forward to it and it's not a big deal it took me what 15 minutes to knock all them out maybe now i've got to get them all up there plus i've never actually fit the batten that belongs there and we've got some insulation to go in there i mean we're not fitting the ceiling today we're just testing and cutting and but i've got to get that batten up and it's just occurred to me here where I have added these pieces to fix the ceiling to. I'm going to also have to make a couple more of these shims and uh, do the same down the side of there. In fact, what I'm going to have to do is run a, a line or a level or something across these beams here and mark up on there where I need to be and then build something to fix the ceiling to there because of course that just goes flat and we don't want that and it'd be the same on the other side but that's okay these are the things that we're here for we'll get them done I can hardly hold this camera right now it's so cold I'm going to swap hands <sighs> can't feel my fingers there it's really not pleasant working at this time of year at all we were meant to be gone by now, do you know that? For all you guys who've been following for a long time, you'll know we should have been gone by now. But yeah, life happens, doesn't it? For anyone who's going to build a van, let me tell you, it takes oh, twice, if not three times longer than you think it's going to. Okay? No matter what your skills are, what you think you can do, it will take longer. I promise you that. I'm working almost every day on it at the moment and uh, it's just I keep slipping behind on my schedule and I keep thinking how am I how am I gonna get it done in time and I keep putting the date back to leaving but I ain't got a choice now because we've handed our notice in on the property so it's ticking anyway I should probably talk less and get on with work shouldn't I yes I should I'm going to use mitre bond to stick these up when I fix the What's it? The ceiling on. That'll put some more fixings through it as well. But this stuff is great. Quick, easy, does the trick. There's not much to watch here when I'm doing this, if I'm honest. Get it in position. Hold it for yeah, a few seconds. I think they say 10 on the can maybe, but it goes off quicker than that. Right, the camera's about to die. I'm not going to put another battery in today. It's too late in the day. So I'll just pick up with you in another day or so when I'm back on this job. Right, as we can see, John is setting up the workshop for the coming day. And I've got a little confession, which you can probably see behind me. And I'm not going to apologise because you know the score now. We're running out of time. We're running out of money. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I say it every video. I know, I know. But we are. And if I don't get this van done quickly, then it's going to 
cost me money I don't have and then we struggle with setting off so anyway you, you know this so as you can see we put the ceiling up yesterday you didn't miss much you saw me cutting the wood you saw us getting the noggins in the only difference is as you can see we sprayed it now I know it looks ridiculous and stripy I'll show you why Ugh. we are going to have strip wood like that yeah something similar to that so we didn't need to waste paint by painting the bits of wood that didn't need paint because they'll be covered up and it also then aided me in knowing where my screws would be uh, it was just quicker and easier it's not properly set up I've missed screws everywhere it was a quick job and I was wise not to film it was so cold yesterday in the UK right now it's freezing absolutely freezing and i couldn't take my gloves off to even think about holding a camera so yeah like i say i'm not apologizing i apologize for not apologizing <laughs> i can't help myself can i but uh, this is the way it is this is just the way it is it had to be done so there we go what a transformation we now have our sort of sub ceiling and then the big strips and the lights will go in at a later date what this is going to allow us to do is today the plan is gonna you know I did a bit of framework here I need to finish this framework off here and then we can get that big panel which I'm probably going to cut very soon as John's setting up workshop we've got some 5.5 mil ply and I will cut it to the size and I will cut a very crude hole for the window and then what we can do is we can get some paint on that we'll get some undercoat on it and we'll start getting the coats of paint on it what I'm going to do is set up like a paint studio in the living room in the house because it's too cold for paint to dry right now so we should be able to get that painted and done today then we will look at getting the rest of this framework in and then we will look at getting the window framed off and i'm going to put the the blind that comes with this window it's a shame it's a white frame but it's too late now to think about changing it i'll get that fit and installed now reason for that i was originally thinking i might put it on the outside of everything that i built that doesn't really work i don't think it'll stick out too far then i thought about putting it on and burying it behind wood to make it look prettier but then what if it fails what if something goes wrong with it i'll never be able to take it off again they, they do seem a little bit flimsy those blinds i'm sure it'll last many years but at some point it'll probably break and need replacing i want to be able to just unscrew it and pull it out and then replace it so that being said we're going to cut the piece of wood now and the sun is out today the temperature is not as low as yesterday so we will do a bit of filming for you all right so you'll see that wall go in oh doesn't that look nice Now, as you can see, I've cut that one piece that fits across there. We can't do it in one big piece, unfortunately, because it is 130 centimetres across. How big is a sheet of ply? 120 across. So, therefore, we can't get the full height. So, I'm going to do it in two sections, which might work out quite well, because I kind of had an idea about making this look like um, wooden panelling. Now you see, one minute I'm worrying about time frame, next minute I'm trying to make things look fancy. It won't take long with the router. I might do it, it'll look good, and I can put a piece of trim across. And I think it'll, I think it'll tie in with the theme. Let's find out. But firstly, I think I'll get the big piece cut to go above that piece, so we've definitely got our pieces. And then I'll put them channels in that one to make it look like panelling. Then I'll set John with the task of painting them in the house. Will I get some more buttons in? Yes!
just needs a little whisker off it. That's right. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have a go at turning this into like paneling, like I said. Uh, that's for my electric, so holes there in case you're wondering. I'm only gonna do this lower panel. I'm thinking sort of 10 centimeters apart. I've just calculated it out there. So all I've got to do is I have this, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I'm gonna try and zoom in on that. I've got a really sharp little pointy router bit. So I thought I'd go to a bit more detail about this because it's just a little bit more interesting than just all the other stuff I've been doing, in my mind. Now it really doesn't need to be deep at all. In fact, the shallower the better because I don't want to go through too many layers of this ply. It literally just wants to scar the surface, I think. So I've just set that depth for, to what must be a millimetre and a half, maybe two mil max on this bad boy. Then what I'm going to have to do is calculate from the center of there to the edge of there is typically an annoying sort of 72 mil. So what I will do ah, is I need to measure, uh, I don't do the first one, do I? So, but I do, oh, come on brain. So from 10, I need 72 mil to there. That's right, 72. I need 72. 72, 72, 72. It's a bit faffy, but it's not gonna take that long and give us a really nice effect. I mean, what helps me today is John is on form and because he's trained up on this thing, he's able to cut and work, you know, really, really well and help me out loads while I'm getting on with other bits. So it does allow me a bit of time Makes, you won't believe the difference it makes to me mentally, having him there being able to work well. Some days he does float about a bit in his own little world. Teenage boy, what can you do? One, seven, two. One, seven, two. And the next one is two, seven, two. Oh, it should be the same, shouldn't it? And so on. Should it? Yeah. Yeah, of course it should. Two, seven, two. Three, Seven two four seven two five six seven eight nine one oh seven two one one seven two. There's no reason why I can't just bop some music on, stick my headgear on, clamp that there, router it, clamp that there, router it, clamp, and it will give us a nice effect. I've been thinking about this since the beginning of the build, and I'm determined to just see a few things through like this. I'm very happy with this. So, just needs a little light sanding down the channels and everything's ready here. So I think we'll set up the painting room inside. John's just away doing something at the moment, but then we'll get him set up with painting and I'll start getting some more battens in. But I'll just quickly do this. And there we have it, our painting room. So then we've gone with the salmon color. Looks a bit bad in this light, but there we go. That's my nice panel-y bit. That's the bit to go around the window. Right, we're just getting set up for cutting some framework outside, but John's discovered something really cool he can do with the drill and he wants to show you. So here you go. Can we get some work done now, please? <laughs> Mop it. <laughs> I 
Right, I've just stuck one screw through here, then I realised I wasn't showing you guys. So I'll set you up and I'll do a couple more, but I'll be honest, it's getting to um, swearing and shouting sort of stage. It's cold again, it's getting dark. Um, and yeah, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> Right, I think the microphone's about to run out of power, but yes, I'm going to continue. I'm going to attempt to get this in and that piece of wood up there. I can stick you on with maybe no sound and music and cut it and make it look fantastic. Let's see what we get done tonight. And then it'll just cut to another day. Then it's the weekend. I won't be back for a few days. So I'll see you after that, but you can watch this first. Good morning folks. Well, it's many, many days since I was filming into the night there. I don't know how long the camera lasted before it cut off because uh, I just haven't looked at it yet. What I did do, it is Tuesday today. I got up yesterday and I did do some tinkering around and just trimming it up a little bit, that wall. I'm going to show you it right now and I hope you're going to like it because I blooming love it. Look at that. It's a bit tricky with the sun and the shadows the way they are, but check this out. Now, obviously there's gonna be a cupboard up there, so those screws don't matter. We put this fantastic frame around it. Oh, a bit dusty and dirty. We stained the frame down to match that. And then I've also made a little dado rail out of some old architrave to cover up the gap between the two pieces of wood. As you can see, the, the paneling effect I went for there. I have installed my 240 and a bunch of USB sockets there. And then I've gone with these screw caps or whatever you call them, screw cups around the edges just to uh, hold that in place. That is all now fixed in and operational. And of course we've got our blinds and stuff all working. So I could not be happier. So yeah, with all that said, guys, we are going to end that video here. I don't have any clue how long it's ended up being. There's all sorts of stuff going on, what with the bed and the wall and the framing out and whatnot. We're going to start working on the kitchen, but you're going to be seeing that probably next week or the week after, depending on how it goes on. Um, so yeah, wish us luck and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Do the likey, do the subscribey, jump on the Patreon if you feel like it and come and have a support of us over there. That'd be much, much appreciated. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.